Did you uh, immediately get the impression that you were joining a, a group quite unusual, quite uh, different from any band you've played before, based on Phil's music and the kind of musicians he had in the band, like Pip, who's not your yeah. conventional jazz drummer? Yeah, I, was, I, I kind of enjoyed it because from that point of view, it was different. You know, I, I mean, I was still there, I was still doing it at the same time in town and doing a lot of work with Harry and I had a duo with Rick, so I was playing more almost kind of acoustic to jazz folk roots things as well. So I kept that thing going as well, the acoustic stuff. And then, uh, you know, it was great to sort of play. In a way, I always kind of love this mixture of kind of improvised music, jazz, rock, whatever sort of folky kind of melodies, whatever. Somehow Phil's music had got all this kind of stuff in it. It's always different, you know. And it was always, every time there was a new composition, it was always kind of years pricked up thinking, where's it going now? <laughs> it's always going to take you on some pathway to somewhere, you know. And what were some of the main challenges playing the music? Oh, uh, I think sometimes because of the forms and the structures, I, I always call it fill form because some of it was not like, uh, you could even call it AAB, I mean some of it would be like this theme that linked, linked to this one, that went to that, it was like, in a way like sort of orchestral music, you know, but like for an electric, cum acoustic like ensemble, you know. Um, so there was a lot of stuff in a kind of five piece band, you know, there was a lot of writing going on, I mean, for incredible development of intricate lines, the stuff he wrote for Elton and everybody and then later Jim when he joined and of course there's great stuff that Pete was doing, you know. Well the first version of course was with Steve Franklin, you know, who we've not seen for years and years. But uh, that was the first bigger tour I did around Europe was with uh, Steve, yeah. One of the most enduring pieces on that first album, Split Seconds, was your Route 2, which was a, a, a number from the very beginning of the band with Richard Sinclair, and which you kept playing until the very end. Mm. So that, that piece had something special, was it about the groove, about the intricacy of the lead lines? and? Oh yeah, there's everything, there's kind of, in that piece actually, there's everything that for guys into the really kind of uh, progtastic stuff as I call it, it's like got all the old, altered time bars and signatures, it's got this great fantastic, if you like heavy music, I suppose, or like kind of, you know, sort of really driving bass lines and that. In fact, the later versions are much more heavy than the, the, the early versions we did. You know, so I got more back into the, using the effects, you know. There was a period I was just developing the pure bass and actually kind of like the thing of effects and stuff on the bass, particularly overdrive, you know, I think it's a real power, a bit like getting a big church organ to roar or something, you know, when you get the overdrive on it, so I really got back into all that again. <laughs> I think thanks to that band scene to and Phil's music kind of drove me into these sort of areas in a way, you know. Well, there was a tradition of, uh, of applying fuzz to bass, <laughs> right with from, uh, you Hopper being part yeah, of the band before. Exactly, yeah, it was absolute, uh, a great thing with you, of course, it was all the experimentation with the sound. A lot of people had never done a lot of stuff that you had done before that, you know, with the uh, different effects and that on the bass, you know. But you, uh, other than that, you were quite a different player to Hugh. Yeah, I think that everybody is uh, it's um, the great thing is you can actually see it's the same instrument but it's different personalities I think come through it and different um, 
things which is good, then you, people have got some kind of individual things, you know. I think the hard thing has been to shake off, obviously, the early influences like people like Jack and all this stuff and like trying to develop young things out of it, you know, it's like, um, you're not necessarily want everything to go away, I suppose, like a lot of great sax players don't want to lose the links with, say, Charlie Parker or something, but like with a bass, you've got to think, well, I mean, that is the great thing with Phil's music, is it meant that I could have a voice in it as well, which is different. When you look below the surface, you could see probably the interest in how you make this thing work in a orchestration sense and also compositional way that makes the bass kind of um, be a real, not just a bass, but be an integral part of the band. And Phil wrote some fantastic pieces for me over the years, you know. The first material you began playing with the band wasn't tailor-made for you, but over the years Phil very mm. much uh, suited his, uh, his, his writing to your particular style and abilities. Right. Oh yeah, he kind of heard, he used to say to me, I'd listen to you, he'd go out and see me play some jazz gigs somewhere and hear what I'd probably do and then think about writing some lines for me, it was incredible, you know. He said it actually inspired him to go away and do something, so, or just hear me playing on a gig with him, like something live, and then somehow taking that on board and and saw me what I could do and get the sounds and things out of the bass and thought, you know, he'd try and write things. It pushed me to the limit, actually. It was great, you know. You know, and they're so melodic. I think even if the complex harmony fills music, it's got this amazing, there's some guys who are fusing players and all the rest of it and that, and they, it's very good and everything, but fills to me is like compositionally a kind of step up because it's really got, uh, he really works it as well. It, it was uh, amazing melodic content as well within that harmonic structure and framework, you know. And uh, I think that's the thing that, it wasn't about just trying to play a million miles an hour or loads of scales across this and that little modes on these chains. about what is the music saying and what's the musical form and everything, you know. Uh, sometimes, yeah, right, things that were great vehicles for improvisation to build things on, yeah. Absolute gems. <laughs>